nervous now. Okay. Um, hello, everybody. Um, hello there. This is John Spencer. And this is Catherine Spencer. And we are delighted to be part of the British Cheese Weekender. Um, fantastic thanks to Patrick and Tracy for organising such an event. We really enjoyed last year's. Um, it was great to see the cheese makers, to learn more about wine pairings with cheese, um, go to the dairies, chat about cheese in general. It was lovely and, and um, had a huge impact on, I think, the support of British cheese makers, artisan cheese makers. Yeah, absolutely. Which was lovely. Um, John and I John and I own the Cheddar Gorge Cheese Company and we are traditional cheddar makers based in Cheddar Gorge in Somerset. Um, we are the only cheese, cheddar cheese makers in Cheddar, so um, it's an honour and a privilege to be preserving the authentic product, which um, we're really proud of. Um, before we took over the business, which was about... Um, 2003. So about 18 years ago, something like that. Um, some ways it's gone really quickly, in other ways it's just been a <laughs> slog. Been an interesting time. Yeah, um, but um, we both worked for cheese companies in the past, dairy and cheese. And my background was all about quality assurance and um, uh, quality systems in the industry. Um, John will tell you more about his background later. Well, I'm, I was marketing, um, yeah. so had nothing to do with actually making cheese at the time, mm. but it always fascinated me. Yeah, and when we met while well, we were both in the cheese industry about 27 years ago, something like that. And um, in our hearts, we'd always wanted to make our own cheese. It was great working for big companies and the experience and training was superb. Um, mass producing cheese um, and all the different cheeses that we got involved with. But I think in our hearts, we wanted to make our own cheese because small production, um, close control, getting to know the raw material, all those things contribute to better quality cheese. And um, yeah, so now we're doing it, which is lovely. Um, we make it by hand um, and we make it from raw milk. We get our cheese from one local farm in Cheddar and we know the farm, we know the cows, we know what they're fed on, we know the composition of the milk. Um, lovely, lovely farmers who um, run the farm. Um, and we make our cheese in the round. So these large cylinders are how we make the cheese, the traditional way. And this is a mould that we fill and press in order to get our cheeses. And we cloth, um, we, they're cloth bound, so we mature them in cloth. So all those factors make a difference to the quality of the cheese and to the finished product, um, which is very different to the everyday cheddar, which is available. Um, and I think, I'm pretty sure cheddar is the most popular cheese in the world. So um, our cheese is very different to the everyday supermarket cheddar. There's obviously a market for both, which is great. We can't compete on price with the big producers, but we do compete on taste. And that's wonderful. We're really proud of that. Um, so yeah, that's lovely. Um, so talking a little bit about 2020 last year and the impact of the pandemic, um, which was devastating really. We uh, stopped making cheese at the end of March when the lockdown was announced. Yeah. Closed our shop in Cheddar Gorge on the visitor centre, furloughed most of the staff. Yes, I mean, we did what we thought we needed to do to survive. Um, nobody knew then what was gonna happen during the year, mm. so we just had to cut costs. Yeah, it was, um, it was awful really. And we were very worried, um, obviously like all of us, traditional and um, artisanal cheese makers. Um, but we were delighted and surprised to find that our mail orders took off. Um, whether it's because people were at home and they had a bit more time, maybe a bit more money because they couldn't go shopping uh, physically. Um, but we had an increased demand for our cheese. We'd only just upgraded our website as well in February, so we could cope with this up, 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 uplift, which was wonderful, wonderful. Catherine being very modest here because she led the whole thing online and all the promotional stuff. So a lot of it's down to her, but we actually increased by the amounts that we did. Well, it was definitely a team effort actually. And I think, and also it's amazing what you can do under pressure and how inventive and creative we had to become in order to survive. So 
Um, we had stopped making cheese, although one of our cheese makers was looking after the cheese in the stores. We brought a small team back and literally turned our visitor centre into an Amazon um, sort of production warehouse. It was incredible. We literally processed the orders in the morning, um, picked the cheese, packed the cheese, packed up the parcels, created the labels and the courier came every afternoon and dispatched, we dispatched the products um, and they went all over the UK and the EU then, but of course we can't do that at the moment, but we're not going to talk about that now. Um, and um, yeah, the support was incredible. So really, if it wasn't for that uplift, we wouldn't be here now, that's for sure. And I think one of the other important points of that is that we were selling direct to the public. Mm -hmm. So obviously the prices were a, bit, were a bit better, but the main thing is we were getting our name out. We weren't going through anybody. Yeah. And selling online means you do sell direct to the consumer. Yeah, um, you know, we were luckily in a position where we could do it. Um, yeah, it was incredible really. Um, but definitely it was helped by the British Cheese Weekend event last year and um, in support from people like Jamie Oliver, of course, Patrick McGuigan, um, the Academy of Cheese, Specialist Cheese Makers Association. There was a whole rallying of support for us small cheese makers and not so small ones, but we, we just couldn't sell the volumes that we've been selling before. Um, and, you know, we can't thank everybody enough for just letting us, most of us survive, yeah. which was incredible. Um, the other thing that we were not expecting was the inundation of uh, press and lots of calls, wanting to do interviews, wanted to chat about how we were surviving the pandemic and what was happening to our cheese. Um, we're lucky in that our cheese is long matured, so we could, you know, have a little bit of thinking time to work out what was going to happen. Um, and we made some adjustments to just keep it all going. But um, uh, we were also asked to do an Instagram Live with someone, and that's when we found out we couldn't actually do Instagram Live. We would have loved to have done it today, but um, the reception in Cheddar Gorge isn't too good. So in the caves where we mature cheese, there's no reception. In one of our maturing stores, there isn't. So I'm sorry we're not doing anything live today, but um, this is the next best thing really. Yeah. Um, and also when you're seeing this session on Saturday, we're gonna be on hand to answer any questions, any calls you might have, mainly through the social media platforms really. So uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, we'll be around. If you've got any questions or just wanna have a chat, we'd love to talk to you. Um, so yeah, sport was incredible and um, yeah, it all went really well and we are still here today, which is great. Um, like all, like our cheese, we're not particularly high tech and um, we had to become computer savvy, didn't we? We just, yeah, we, absolutely. you know, we had to rise to the challenge. We're not brilliant at marketing and shouting about ourselves. Well, we, I've had to, I've had to be to survive, but um, we developed things, we got creative and we developed things like our isolation bundles and quarantine packs and sold them at a special price last year so that um, those who wanted to buy our cheese that couldn't come to us could still buy them. But we had so many new customers who just wanted to send bundles of joy to their families or their loved ones or for birthday presents um, because they couldn't get together. So um, we, we had to get really efficient to make sure we offered a good service, quality of service and um, quality of product, obviously. Um, so that was great. That was really nice doing that. Um, so yeah, big thank you to the British public for supporting us and everybody else. Um, I'm going to hand over to John in a minute, who's going to talk more specifically about our journey and um, where we are today and how we got here. Um, we are going to run a little film after this, which we have made previously, um, which is interesting, it shows you how we make the cheese and you see the cheese makers in action, which is quite exciting. But just to clarify, um, Jeremy Corbyn is not in the interview <laughs> because so many people when they saw it thought it was, it was John with a beard. But um, so just to, just to clear that up in case there's any confusion. Um, but yeah, um, thank you so much for everything and over okay. to John. Um, I've got notes, I hope you don't mind. Um, Catherine's been over some of the stuff I wanted to go over or we wanted to go over in, in as much as we both have a background in the dairy industry, but not specifically of making cheese. And that's what we wanted to do. Um, so we looked around in the early noughties um, 
for cheese businesses that may be for sale or an opportunity that we could and we said prepare to look at anything my background was mostly continental cheese so it was speciality so we said we'd look at anything anything except cheddar mm -hmm. because cheddar is such a sort of commodity product and the traditional end of it is so small compared with the total cheddar market that it's it's can be an uphill battle you're selling an artisan cheese um, with a commodity name but anyway we heard about a, a struggling company um, making cheddar in cheddar and decided might be worth looking at my, my marketing nose began to twitch then and I thought maybe there's something in that if we can make something of it so we had a number of conversations with the then owners and after what I thought was an in-depth investigation we decided to take the plunge and make a uh, bill sorry and buy the company um, the day is stuck on my brain it's the 13th of August 2003 and specifically because that's one of our daughter's birthdays so instead of celebrating a birthday with an eight-year-old I was sitting in an office waiting for the phone to ring Shout out to Kissy. <laughs> <laughs> um, the immediate problem we came across was the quality of the cheese we inherited. Not all of it, but a lot of it. And a lot of it was down to storage. We had three stores, or three methods of storage. One was in a nice chill store, running at 11 degrees, lovely. The other was in a container, mm. which we found out afterwards had been a frozen Vehicle. So what you had to do was in the morning go and turn it off um, and then just test it all the time before you turned it on again and then turned it off. It was a nightmare. Mm. But that was quite good compared with the third method which was in one of the buildings we inherited in black bin bags mm. at ambient temperature. Terrible. So we inherited some reasonable cheese and some not reasonable cheese and also a vast army of might. Um, the way it was being stored, by the way this is not meant to be uh, a downer, it's meant to really say you can overcome these things mm. and if people want to start, you know, these things are there but you can overcome them if you really have a go at it. Mm. So with the mite, did a lot of research on mite and the key seems to me is numbers. They seem to have a, a period from when they're born to when they can produce eggs of about six weeks so you've got to keep the numbers down and do everything in less than six weeks and gradually the numbers will go down and now and I'll probably get shot for saying this we do not have a problem with mites at all we have other methods as well that we use but the main thing is doing it within this time frame mm. so having got in there and found all this we had to get a, some extra storage built. I was making cheese regularly then and we started putting in small quality improvements. Now one of the problems with cheddar is you put a quality improvement in and then you have to wait a year basically to find out whether it's going to work. So there was a lot of in progress going on during that first year. And there wasn't a lot of help really at the time. Um, not much to actually refer back to because most books on cheddar talk about mass-produced cheddar basically and all the stuff that I could find were books from the 1800s which actually were very relevant and covered things that I couldn't find anywhere else so they became part of the project improvement um, but then after we'd done this and we got it on the go sort of um, business reality then kicked in and we found we were losing a lot of money. Obviously we had to spend a lot on chill, making a, a new chill store and also in terms of building stock. I mean we retail our cheddar or we sell our cheddar at around 12 to 15 months. So you need 12 to 15 months stock and that costs cash. Mm. On average. 12 to 15. Yeah. yeah. So vintage is about 24, 28 months yeah. old at the moment. So, yeah. um, so at the end of year two, we decided that we would give it another year. If it 
didn't turn it round then, then we would get out and cut our losses. Happily, as you can see, we're still here. Um, we did make a profit in that year. I mean, it was only £2,000, but it was a profit and it gave us the incentive to carry on. And I'm so glad we did. Um, the quality improvement uh, issues then started to kick in and the cheese started getting better and better. And we, we were very pleased when in 2008 we won Best Cheddar in the Show at the World Cheese Awards and then in 2013 mm. Best Cheddar in the Show at the British Cheese Awards. Now they're not everything but we make cheese to sell so we select from that so it's representative of, of what we actually make. We also began to mature our cheese in the Cheddar Caves. The Cheddar Caves are perfect for maturing. They're natural caves they're limestone and you get around 95 to 98 percent humidity all year round. We were worried because of the show caves and you get a lot of people in that we get temperature fluctuations but we put temperature loggers in mm. and the maximum difference throughout the year was 0.4 of a degree centigrade so they're absolutely perfect. Mm. The other thing was when we started it, and I can admit this now because it's long, it's far enough away, um, I didn't know whether cave maturing was going to be a great marketing idea or a great marketing idea and something that really affected the cheese. Well, happily, it's the second. Um, cave, our cave matured cheddar is slightly softer and matures slightly differently, so you get different flavours. We've done this test where we keep some of the same vat in our store and some in the caves and putting them side by side you would really think they mm. were different cheeses so there's a real difference that the caves make it's been very interesting that project it's just incredible yeah. yeah yeah it has so we've still got the same three aims as we had when we were started um, and i must get them right so we want to keep the tradition of cheddar making in cheddar and one of the things we're proudest of is now I don't make cheese so much now, but we trained our three cheese makers mm. and they can carry on the tradition. We've now got three people who know how to make traditional cheese and know how to make it well. Mm. They've all made gold medal winning cheese. Um, and that's something I think that's, that's really important. Mm. Um, and the other thing that we've done is we have concentrated on selling direct to the consumer. We're a small company, most traditional cheddar makers are small companies and quite small in terms of the total market. So it strikes me that we're best to sell as direct to the consumer as we can. Um, you get better margins, you can reach them, you can talk to them. It's much better rather than a sort of faceless supermarket. I used to work for one of the big supermarkets so I'm, I'm not being too rude. Um, so I'm really pleased that we've, we've managed to do that. There's one other thing I just want to mention. Catherine's too modest too. When you cut cheese, you obviously get um, broken bits. So nothing wrong with the cheese at all, but what happens to the broken bits? Well, Catherine came up with the idea of making cheese straws. Actually, it was your idea. Well, it was definitely John's idea for it. We'll have an argument. We'll have a domestic <laughs> later. Um, but we made these, or Kathleen made these, and they're really high in cheese. So they're, they're cheese straws that have a lot of cheese in. 37% actually. And um, we started marketing those in our small retail outlet. And they grew and grew until we got to the point where we couldn't make them at home. So we now have a local baker <laughs> who makes them with our cheese into our um, recipe. Mm. And we now got to this stage where we haven't got enough cheese that's breaking, so we have to use whole cheese yeah. to keep up with the demand for the straws. I can't believe that. So we're not quite going to rename ourselves as Cheddar Gorge Cheese Straw Company, but it's mm. they're, they're really very popular. Anyway, thank you for watching. Mm. I hope that just a brief look at what we've gone through to get where we are um, gives encouragement because 
we had a lot of problems to start with. Mm. We inherited something that was a lot worse than we thought. Um, but head down, got through it, and hopefully making decent shoes now. Thank you for watching. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of the weekend. And um, I'm pretty sure you can be able, you can rewatch these in the future, the whole weekend's events and sessions. So, um, thanks again to Patrick and Tracy, and um, yeah, hope to see you, speak to you soon. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs> you might <laughs> run over time a bit. Then. That's okay. <clears throat> well. Twenty minutes.